Hey everyone, welcome back to Kali Plans and for our second day on our daily care guide series, we will be talking about Echeveria chihuahuaensis. Okay, so this is the plant that the plant that is usually called cat's claw, cat's paw. Here in the Philippines, it's a very beautiful succulent. Actually, a lot of people really want this plant, and this is plant that I've also wanted for a very long time. I used to have one of these plants before, but I I didn't treat it very well because I wasn't that good with uh, succulents before. But now I'm treating this one pretty nicely. It's growing pretty consistently, and it's even established itself. So I think that a care guide for this one is about time it's about time that i made a care guide for this plant now just so you know what we'll be talking about in this video i will be sharing with you this plant's origin its description also i will be giving you tips on what potting mix is good for it what sun exposure and watering needs uh, this plant has and also how to propagate it and the problems that you might find with this succulent so i will show you the problems later on in this video so i hope you watch until the end of this video guys so first we're gonna go with the description of this plant and you know the name Echeveria chihuahuaensis, it only means that the plant comes from Chihuahua, which is a place in Mexico. Actually, the first person that described this plant, his name is Von Powell Nitz. Uh, he described it in 1935, so that's what I researched about this plant. If you manage to look at it on the International Crassula Sea website. And he said in that description that this plant came from Mexico, from Sonora, Chihuahua, and from Durango. So those are places in Mexico which you can find this succulent. And this is actually a very beautiful, very small succulent. Actually, in the wild, it doesn't have this appearance. It can has it doesn't has that much um, prominent leaves, prominent edges on it. Be but in cultivation, because the plant is uh, cared for and it's getting thicker leaves in cultivation, so you can see that bright tips, red tips on the plant which are really stunning, really beautiful. And I would say that it's only more prominent when the plant is in cultivation and not in the wild. So you might find that if you go to Mexico that this plant doesn't look like this in the wild. Now also this succulent is a very compact grower. You can see here that the rosette is very closed. So it doesn't need a ton of sun. If you give it probably less sun, the rosette will become more open, the leaves will become much larger. But if you give it consistent um, morning sun and filtered sun for the whole day, you can get this compact looking shape and the red tips will be very much prominent on this plant which is very beautiful. And also, when it matures, it, ha it can produce babies on the side. But I haven't seen a lot of chihuahuanensis do that. Some chihuahuanensis can be solitary their entire lives, but some others can also produce pups. So that just depends on the plant. And also, when it flowers, it produces this tall inflorescence, these tall flower stalks, which has pink leaves on the outside with a yellow throat. So the inside of the flower will be yellow and the outer part of the flower will become pinkish. So that's uh, another nice thing to look for if you're caring for chihuahuanensis but some other people doesn't really like flowers. So if you don't like flowers, then you can just cut it off. But you can see that the interest is also in the leaves. The leaves are the most interesting part of this plant. It's got this glaucous bluish green leaves which are really vibrant. It's got this lighter color on it that really stands out compared with our darker colored succulents and also the standout feature of this plant is the edges so the tips the red tips that's really what inspired the people to name it cat's claw because of its really vibrant really beautiful looking tips you can see that it's really stunning it's really beautiful if you look at it up close and it actually resembles a lot of the more expensive echeverias out there in the market but this one is a cheaper one so if you want a very interesting succulent that is cheap, that is not usually found in other people's collections because other succulents have single colors on them. So if you want something more interesting, more pleasing to the eye, then I would recommend this Chihuahuanensis. Okay, I just said Chihuahuanensis, but it's actually Chihuahuayensis. It doesn't have nensis at the end of the word, it has ensis. So Chihuahuaensis. So that's how the plant's name is spelled. Now when it comes to the potting mix of this plant, I would recommend you use our usual 7 parts pumice and 3 parts organic material like uh, carbonized rice hull or like vermicast, cocoa peat. So you can do a mixture of those but I would recommend you only use small parts of cocoa peat if you're using a deeper pot like this because cocoa peat has a tendency to not dry out very quickly. 
so i would recommend if you're using a deeper pot you use a carbonized rice hull mixture like this one i'm using a carbonized rice hull on this plant it's actually composted rice hull so i find that very successful with my plants especially if you add seven parts of pumice i would highly recommend that you add a lot of pumice so that the plant can have drainage it doesn't stay wet for very long especially with these thick type succulents they can tend to drop their leaves they can tend to get rot if they don't dry out very quickly also with the sun exposure after repotting this i would really recommend you give it seven days of direct morning sun before you start watering it so if you don't want to put your blah, if you don't want to put your plant in full sun i would recommend you give it morning sun at least morning sun for until about 7 or 8 a.m and do that for seven days before you start watering don't water your plant if it's still in the in a shaded area if you're still if it still hasn't got a chance to produce roots so don't water it yet but i would say that if you give it morning sun right away after repotting it then it can start producing roots so if the plant senses that it's losing a lot of water because it's getting sun then it will produce roots so i would really recommend you give your newly planted succulent sun so that it can produce roots so that if you start watering it they can drink up the roots uh, they can drink up the water from the roots because without those roots the plant can rot and the plant can die that's actually a common problem with a lot of beginners because a lot of beginners really kill this plant just after buying them now i will also add with the watering of this plant this one doesn't need consistent watering you can pretty much neglect it because of the thick leaves it has it doesn't need consistent watering and what i found with this uh, chihuahuaensis it actually holds on to a lot of the water uh, on its leaves unlike with other echeverias with other succulents some other succulents even if you water them they don't really absorb the water very quickly and they also lose a lot of their water very quickly but the chihuahua chihuahuaensis it can actually hold on to the water for much longer compared to other succulents so it's one that is resilient it can also be neglected you can leave it for about a week before you water it again but you would know that it needs watering if the bottom leaves are already you can already push it it's not already firm so like with this one it is already kind of not firm anymore so i can already give this water so that it will grow but also i can neglect it for longer so that the leaves will become much more thicker so that's what i would say if your chihuahuanensis has thin leaves you can water it less frequently and the leaves will become thicker if your plant has very thick leaves and you want it to grow much faster then you can give it more frequent watering so you can adjust your watering depending on what you would like the plant to do because if it's stressed if it's thick it will not produce a lot of growth but if you consistently give it water even if it's not yet you know a lot of if it's not yet very thirsty if you give it water then it can produce more growth more consistently especially um, when it's getting a lot of sun so it can produce a lot of growth quickly as well so you can see here this one is already this one already has a lot more leaves than when i first got this plant so it's produced quite a consistent uh, growth of leaves you would know it's producing new leaves if the center of the rosette is already filling up so that means it's producing more growth when it comes to the propagation of this plant i would say that it can probably propagate by a leaf because it's a thick leaf succulent so you can just uh, take a bottom part bottom leaf of this plant uh, maybe when it's gotten a little bit bigger because this is still small maybe if it gets as wide as the pot then that could have a lot more chances of a lot more success of propagating if you wait for it to grow but i think that you can also success with it while it's still small but you wouldn't expect a big plant to come out of a small leaf so you would really want to wait for your plant to grow before you start propagating it and also if you manage to grow it big if you think that the stem inside is already thick enough you can behead this plant so that it will produce pups on the sides now as i said before this plant can also produce clumps if you just let it grow let it mature but some plants will not do that they will not produce offsets on the side so it really depends upon the plant if it wants to produce babies or not so if your plant doesn't uh, clump then you can just behead it but if your plant if you let it mature maybe you can wait a little bit for it to produce pups because some plants will actually do that so that's how you propagate the chihuahuaensis now when it comes to the problems i would say that this is a very very sensitive when it comes to its growing season because i find that my chihuahuaensis they produce a lot of leaves when it's summer and when the winter comes in they won't produce a lot of leaves and if you water them a lot during the winter months 
then they will lose a lot of leaves. So I would avoid watering your echeverias when the winter is in, when the months are cooler, because they can tend to lose a lot of leaves if it's cold and if you're watering them a lot, they can drop their leaves. So I would really avoid that. I actually have a big size Chihuahuaensis here before that dropped a lot of leaves and now it's a small plant and now it's struggling to come back to its original size because, you know, when, it, when the plant is smaller, it has less leaves to photosynthesis, to do photosynthesis so it can take longer for the plant to recover, to get big again. So I would avoid that you water this a lot if it's not sunny in your area if it's in a shaded area or if it's in the middle of the summer or in the middle of the winter avoid watering it this a lot because it really is sensitive when it comes to its growing season it really likes to grow more during the summer or the spring also another problem with this plant could be the mealybugs so you can get that pest mealybugs aphids scale it can also get scale because the leaves are so big so i would recommend starkle g uh, that is a systemic insecticide you can put on the pot of your plant which the plant will absorb and then it will kill any insects that bites on the plant. So I would recommend that Starkle G. I've had success with that insecticide before but if your plant is not neglected, I like this one. If you're watching your plant carefully and if you're not keeping it dry for too long, if you're not giving it much stress, because if a plant is dry for too long, it will get stressed. If you're not stressing it too much, then it can probably have some resistance to pests. Because this one, I didn't have any pest problems on this one yet. Because I've been keeping my eye on it. I'm not neglecting it too much. Because if you neglect your succulents too much, especially with our humid climate here in the Philippines, they can tend to get a lot of pests quickly if you neglect them. Now, when it comes to shipping this plant, I would really say that Chihuahuayans is a good plant to ship. I've never had issues with my... Chihuahuaensis deliveries before I actually have um, three of these plants right here right now so I had experience with them before the bottom leaves could dry out in shipping so that's just normal that's just to be expected but I haven't seen a lot of my Chihuahuaensis get rot while in shipping so they can tolerate a little bit of time in a box so if you buy this online you can probably expect your plant to arrive in a good shape and probably close to the original picture of the plant when the seller posted it so i would really recommend this plant if you're buying from a distant part here in the philippines if the shipping is low in your area then this one it can probably survive and it will reach you healthily so that's a good thing about the chihuahuaensis actually a lot more people are discovering this plant right now and a lot more people are growing this plant because it's a really interesting succulent it's very easy to care for if you manage to know what it needs if you have a lot of air if you have a lot of sun in your area this one is a very good very consistent grower actually i don't have any issues with it when it comes to sunburn so that's another good thing about this succulent now i would also like to say again i would also like to remind you that this plant is a full sun succulent so if you have a filtered area in your space that gets filtered sun for the whole day i would recommend that you put it there and don't worry about it getting a lot of heat because it can tolerate heat once it establishes itself and also just give it direct morning sun right away after planting it you know uh, don't worry about your succulents getting too hot because succulents actually like that they like heat actually my succulents here they all get heat but they still grow consistently so i would not bother myself with that uh, unless if you're getting very high temperatures like 30 to 40 degrees celsius so you can probably give them more protection but when it comes to morning sun if it's not too hot yet they can tolerate the heat that comes off from the sun so this one actually is in a bit more of a full sun area on my greenhouse and it doesn't produce any sunburns so unlike with our Echeveria gilba, that plant can get sunburned very quickly because it doesn't have a lot of farina. But this one, since it has more farina, it can tolerate a little more sun. So I think that's about all I can say about the Echeveria chihuahuaensis. If you really like this plant and if you like the tips I gave you, please make sure to hit the thumbs up below. And also if you haven't subscribed already, you can also hit the subscribe. If you have any issues or problems with this, this plant that I haven't discussed in this video, you can also comment it below. I will try to answer as quickly as I can if I read your comments. And also if you have any other plant requests when it comes to our daily care guide, make sure to comment it also down below so that I know what plants I will be doing next in this video series. So I think that's about it for this video guys i will see you on the next one bye bye